Yeah, hello everyone. Myself Maruti. Welcome you all to this uh, physics video session. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Ajmutal quantum number. Right. Uh, before that, what's a quantum number? Right. A quantum number is nothing but uh, a figure or a number which tells about the state of an electron around the nucleus. Right. Where it is present how it is oriented along with what it is oriented is it x axis y axis z axis in which direction it is moving to talk about that to indicate that to describe about that mr erwin scrudinger has proposed mechanical model of atom in that one we are having four principal quantum number or uh, four quantum numbers in that one the first one is principal quantum number and the second one is nothing but ajmutal quantum number right today i am going to discuss regarding ajmutal quantum number okay now there are many names to this quantum number the first one is nothing but ajmutal quantum number right or we are having one more angular momentum quantum number right this is given with one more name angular momentum quantum number the third one is orbital quantum number third name is orbital quantum number and the fourth name is subsidiary quantum number so the quantum number what we are going to discuss it is having four names okay we are discussing about right ajmutal quantum number so just now i have been discussing shape of a subcell in the in the space around the nucleus of an atom is indicated by angular momentum quantum number if you just let me describe you now if you take the nucleus okay so this is the space around the nucleus right so in that space what is the shape of the right subshell now let me take this as the first orbit okay now let me go with the second orbit right in the same way the third orbit and so on okay now the nucleus and around the nucleus we are having space right what is the shape of the subshells this is nothing but if you take this as a k and this as l this is the main shell first main shell and this is the second main shell of course we are continuing this now for the first main shell n is equal to 1 we know that one principal quantum number and for this one n is equal to 2 okay now in that orbit what are all the subshells what we have and what is the shape of that generally we will be having s as one of the subshell and right this is the second orbit again we will be having s here and in the same way we are having p here okay now what is the shape of the subshells here generally the subshells what we have as this is in the first orbit we call it as oneness the s orbital is the first subshell s subshell and here as this is in the second orbit that is n is equal to 2 the first one is s and this one is nothing but the p okay now as it is present in the second orbit we call it as 2s and as it is present in the second orbit we call it as 2p okay now the shape of the the shape of the subshells is described by ajmutal quantum number that's what i say shape of a right let me explain you shape of a subshell in the space around the nucleus of an atom is indicated by so this is the nucleus this total is the atom in that one we are having subshell generally the subshells are s p b f i have taken an example of s and p what is the shape of those subshells Shells, where they are present, what is all is explained by Mr. Uh, Arnold Sommerfeld in his Ajmutal quantum number. That's what I repeat. Right. This uh, angular momentum quantum number is uh, proposed by Arnold Sommerfeld. You are supposed to remember this one. Arnold Sommerfeld has proposed right this what's this one ajmutal quantum number that is the first point now what is the symbol what is the symbol of this ajmutal quantum number it is simple as as a small l this is the symbol what we are indicating this as right what's the symbol of ajmutal quantum number it's nothing but l 
okay now very importantly this ashmutan quantum member is depended upon principal quantum member that is what it is depended on principal quantum number you might be thinking how it is if you check it out if you check it out now if you think about the first orbit first orbit what is the principal quantum number one so how many subshells it has if you check it out it has one subshell means if the principal quantum number is one it has one subshell yes in the same way go to the second orbit what's the principal quantum number here two now let us check it how many subshells it has one is s and the other is p this is 2s this is 2p totally how many subshells are there two subshells that is what it mean means as many uh, as as much the value of principal quantum number those many are the subshells you are supposed to remember that's what he said as the n value those many subshells are there in the orbit this is the very very important point it will be very useful for you let me explain you in a different manner now now as you all know as you all know this is this is nothing but the higher orbit in this picture second orbit is nothing but the higher orbit and first orbit is nothing but the lower orbit suppose assume that there is an electron present in the second orbit 2s of second orbit now it likes to jump back to its ground state suppose this is in the excited state it is in the excited state suppose it likes to jump back into the ground state okay now when an electron jumps back into its uh, from a higher uh, right higher energy state to lower energy state that is from e2 to e1 we know some energy is liberated out in the form of electromagnetic radiation we all know that so suppose you assume that energy is liberated out in the form of electro electromagnetic radiation suppose assume like that now if you see those laser rays of course if the wavelength of those light rays if it is in the visible range we can see with the naked eye right if it is not in the visible uh, uh, visible wavelength then obviously we see in the spectrum right now let us take it as emission spectrum emission spectrum let us imagine let us imagine this now let me draw the diagram right so this is nothing but now the first orbit is nothing but k yes the second orbit is nothing but l in the same way the third orbit is nothing but m right now the emission spectrum will be represented by as you all know as you all know it's nothing but the line spectrum it's nothing but line spectrum when the right that's what i repeat when an electron comes from higher energy orbit to lower energy orbit some amount of energy is released in the form of electromagnetic radiation that can be seen in the emission spectrum right now how does the emission spectrum look like it's nothing but line spectrum right right line spectrum now these are the lines indicating the orbits these are nothing but indicating the orbits okay and it is denoted with n value that is principal quantum number it is denoted with principal quantum number now let me give you give you so for the k just now i said for the principal quantum number is nothing but one in the same way for l it is nothing but two and for m it is nothing but the three this is nothing but principal quantum number right now just now i said to you if there are if the principal quantum number is one that's what i said as many n values those many subshells it has right that's what so as it is as n is equal to one how many subshells it has only one let me draw that for you yes now as n value is two how many subshells it has it's nothing but two subshells it has okay now if n value is 3 we'll be having three subshells okay now now right what are the if this is called as a line spectrum this is called as a fine spectrum 
right this is nothing but the fine spectrum line spectrum is denoted by principal quantum number n value now these a fine spectrum is nothing but the subshells these a fine spectrum is nothing but subshells now as i said you subshells is nothing but the first one we take it as s now this is of course if as this is in the first orbit we take it as 1s okay now as it is in the second orbit we take the first one as s the second one as p obviously always the first one is s right here s and p here s p and d accepted but as it is in the first orbit we take it as 1s and as they are in the second orbit we take this as 2s and the 2p and as they are in the third orbit we take it as 3s 3p and 3d okay this is what i mean for right so these are nothing but the orbits which in, in the spectrum we call them as a line spectrum they are denoted with principal quantum number now the main concept is nothing but the azimuthal quantum number so this is a subshell these are the subshells now now what value what azimuthal quantum number what l values we are taking L values. What are the L values we are giving to that? So that's what for s orbital always the L value is zero. Now for p it is nothing but one. For l for p subshell it is nothing but two. And for f subshell l is equal to three. Azimuthal quantum number. So azimuthal quantum number for the s is nothing but L value is nothing but zero. We are least bothered in which orbit it is. Again, as it is L, yes, uh, L value is nothing but zero for this and for this one, L is equal to one. As it is P subshell. Again, L is equal to zero. L is equal to one and L is equal to two. That's what he says. At total quantum number. Now, if you check it out, what are the values we are getting for at total quantum number? At total quantum number, right? What is the value we got it here? Zero. Later on, one. Later on, two. That's what are those integers? Yes, but all those are nothing but the positive integers. Plus one. Plus two, plus three, and so on. But don't forget, zero is also included in that one. That's what he says. L takes positive integer values along with the zero. These are all nothing but the positive integer values along with the zero. This is little bit points about the Hatchworthian quantum number. I like to repeat. Right, the shape of the subshells is the shape of the subshells around the uh, uh, nucleus in an atom is set by Hatchworthian quantum number. Right, this is proposed by Arnold Sommerfeld, and uh, it is symbolized with the letter small l. And as I said to you, L value is always dependent upon n value. That is nothing but principal quantum number. How it is dependent? Just a simple. As much the n value, those many subshells it has. Right? If the n value is one, it has one subshell. If n value is two, it has two subshell. If n value is three, we have three subshells in the same way goes on. Now, right? Uh, what is the azimuthal quantum number value? That's what L is equal to zero for S one two three and please remember it is taking all positive numbers along with the zero. These all are integers, positive integers along with the zero. And very important, we have to remember every L value is related to one S orbital, one uh, subshell. Every L value is related to one subshell. Let's come back. Yeah, that's what I am saying. Every subshell takes one L value. So, if you take the first subshell S, it has taken the value as zero. If you take the second uh, uh, orbit in that one S and P, S took zero value, P took one, and so on. That's what every subshell takes one L value. Now, out of all, what are the values of L? What is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? From where to where it takes the values? That's the point. Say L takes values from zero to n minus one. Just now I said to you L value always depends upon n principal quantum number. So L value takes from zero to n minus one. I will explain you that now. What is the minimum value of L? Minimum value of L is always 
zero and that too for s orbital in every orbit if it is in the first orbit one s l is equal to zero if it is in the second orbit 2s l is equal to zero if it is in the third orbit that is m orbit you are right to 3s its l is nothing but zero so the minimum value of l is always zero now what is the maximum value of l that's what i said l value is always dependent upon m so the maximum value of the l depends upon m how it is let me tell you now so see here what is the value of n here it's nothing but one okay here for the first orbit for first orbit for first orbit for first orbit minimum right minimum l is equal to zero fine but what's the maximum maximum just now i said l is equal to n minus one right what's the n value here is nothing but one one minus one zero means minimum and maximum both for the first orbit is nothing but zero that's what why because we are having only one minimum is zero maximum is all zero but for the first orbit now let's get for the second orbit so let's go for the second orbit right for the second orbit just now let's go for this is the second orbit that is l is nothing but the second orbit what is the minimum value obviously minimum l is equal to zero that two for what for right 2s here it is for 1s whereas minimum value is nothing but 2s l is equal to 0 but what is the maximum that's the point maximum l value just now i said n minus 1 but for second orbit what's the n value n is equal to 2 why because second means n is equal to 2 second orbit it's nothing but l so it is nothing but 2 minus 1 it is nothing but 1 if you check it out this is the maximum value so second for the second orbit maximum n value is nothing but 1 this is the maximum in the second orbit if you are having n is equal to 2 and what is the maximum n minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 straight away one. Now let's guess for the third orbit. I think you can guess it. Let's go for the third orbit. Right, it's nothing but third orbit. Right. What is the third orbit? It's nothing but K L M. For M, principal quantum number is equal to 3, as you all know. Then what might be the minimum L value? Minimum L value is for 3 years, and it is always L is equal to 0 fine but what's the maximum value so maximum is nothing but just now i said it's nothing but n minus one what is n three minus one which is nothing but two if you check it out yes minimum is zero minimum is zero and maximum is n minus one this is the logic what we have to remember he may be right we may be supposed to find the uh, uh, minimum and maximum i have found it for three you may be uh, finding for many habits it might be for till seven so whatever it might be, it depends upon and where. Hope you are able to. In this channel, I have been placing both math and science videos.